Hey guys, Local at here, back with some more World of Tanks. Now, this video I'm going to be showing you a replay from the Jag Panzer IV, or the JGPZ4. Now, I wouldn't normally show a replay from this tank because it wasn't my favourite tank, so I didn't like playing the tank until actually recently. And then I had this game, and I just saw the potential. Now, firstly, obviously what we're doing at the moment, we are on Runeberg, it's a standard battle, and the matchup is pretty good for us. There's only a couple of tier 6s, a lot of tier 5s and artillery at tier 4. So, in all fairness, we are pretty even set up. Now, what I wanted to do is go around over to the G1 area here so I can use these buildings to cross fire to these uh, corridors here. Now, a tank itself, its arm, it can be quite effective against lower tier tanks at range and also its gun is quite punchy. There's 220 damage and 132mm penetration, which is more than sufficient for a lot of the tanks which I could be coming up against, apart from some of the tier 6 heavy tanks. Now this video is going to uh, highlight a couple of things, where not to actually panic, and how lucky you can get if you're, if you're against tunnel visioned players who are not paying attention. Okay, good shot. Off on the SU-85 at first when it was his side. He wasn't expecting me to be down here. But then I bounced off the actual front. Now it can be a pretty effective spot which I'm in at the moment in time. Being able to shoot straight across down that actual... Uh, down the street there. It can be useful to stop the tanks from that corner coming around and shooting some guys in the flank. I'm waiting here. Got another shot. T-69. And another big hit. You can see as well how fast this actual gun does reload. Just coming back. And get the first kill. So now I'm just moving around. There's a lot of artillery around. I don't want to get slammed by them. So I'm moving around, make sure I'm in cover, and I'll get hit. Now, I'm starting to get a little concerned here because all my tanks you can see are in the field. And I've, all these heavies are pushing and surrounding two tanks. Which is the only defense we've got in this corner. And they're just overwhelmed. I'm pulling around to try and see if I can get a position to get a fire on them. There's T-14s left. There's no way I can get a shot on them. At all. Churchill 7 is coming to back me up. I look to get a shot and then realize, oops, that's everybody dead. Get shot on the Excelsior and a bounce. Realise I'm not going to win this fight. And I start to pull back. Bounce his shot in the process. Now, I'm asking for help here. I really don't know what to do. I am starting to flap a little bit in game. Because I'm not really sure how I'm going to stop this onslaught. With them looking at the Excelsior. And with the SU-85 coming down this side. I decided to take the opportunity to try and get some flank shots. As I believe at this point I'm going to lose. But I'll just do what I can. So what I'll do is just poke around and go on the offensive. One shot saw it needs to take out the SU-85, so I wait to reload. She's isn't going to take long. Poke out again. I'll take one shot there. Hit the KB-1. Now if you look, these tanks are focusing on the Churchill 7, which is just in the right-hand corner of the screen. So that's three kills now. I'll take opportunity. Continue. KB-1. Set him on fire. Go for the final hit. He's down. Now, and only now, I've killed three of the tanks. Excelsior turns around to face me. A good hit on him then, but he's got a backup here of another SU-85, which I want to take out first. Once he's down, I want to turn now and finish off this Excelsior. So in quick succession, I killed five enemy tanks, and that was pretty much due to their own stupidity, really, or tunnel vision. Or they may have just not known I was there, but them focusing on the Churchill 7 basically gave me the opportunity to flank them and kill them. I was pretty shocked by that, but it's well the tanks. So what I need to do down, we've got not many tanks left, and they've got some decent tanks for the tier available. So I'm going to try now and shoot this M4 in the rear, and precisely exact, the exact same thing happens again. Shooting twice is not interesting me at all. The tunnel vision on the Combinator... Once he's killed, he turns around for me. It's too late. Now, I've got 100% uh, T1 heavy to fire now. First shot's a bounce. Bounce back. And another go. Now, I've took quite a bit of damage. Now, 
this is when I start to panic as well. With the KV2 being left in a T1 heavy, I can't lose much more health, so I change to premium rounds. APCI is always going to penetrate on this tank, and I need to make sure I get the kill. Don't know where that one goes. There's only me who's left as a fighting tank apart from artillery, so I need to be making these hits count. Now, 1%, I'm going to poke out again. Quick engine damage, and I'm going to figure it out at the moment. I take out the T1 Heavy. Now we're up to 8 kills, I'm down to 151 hit points left, and we're against KV2. Now if he's got the dip gun, most likely he's just going to one shot me, and it's game over. With the artillery on the team, they're not big artillery we've got, but they're not really making much of a move. Now you can see on the minimap he was last spotted here, uh, it was moving north. So I assume that he's going to be coming around this corner, so that's why I'm coming around this side here now, to try and get around the back of him. So I'm careful on this corner, just in case I'm wrong. It looks like I'm not. I waited for the M41 artillery to go down the street because then he would have spotted the KV-2 if he was on that street. So now, no, I'm safe to cross. And with the fact that he's not spotted so far in the field, I'm assuming he's around this area here. Now, I'm sticking to premium rounds because, like I said, with how dangerous KV-2 is, I need to make sure I can kill this tank without it taking a shot on me. Now he's had a good game, he's already got 4 kills himself, so no, he's not going to go down without a fight. Still not spotted and we've got his artillery on the enemy base. What I wanted to do is I wanted to move up to these uh, bushes here near these houses, so I can use the position here as cover while I fire down that street and cover our artillery on cap. As I know he's got to be coming from that direction due to his last known positions and where our tanks have been. And there he is spotted. I get a shot here. That's a good hit on him. And I'm not spotted, so he has no idea where I am. Another shot, blind fire in there. Try and move a little bit closer. Now I'm back up again, so I'm getting a bit paranoid. I want to make sure I'm in a good spot. He's coming from the other street. Get another shot in him. And he's down. And that's all she wrote. So, all in all, it was a pretty good replay. Uh, pretty good game, sorry. Um, I've enjoyed playing this tank in this battle. Um, it was quite, pretty tense early on in the game, especially when I was severely outnumbered by some high-tier tanks, some heavier tanks. Um, it was a bit touch-and-go, but I remained calm. Luckily for me, the, the enemy team was just tunnel vision on the Churchill 7, which gave me the opportunity to flank them and keep firing and firing and firing. So I managed to actually uh, get the kill on them. Now let's have a look at the post-game stats. So after a game like that, there was no surprise that I got my Ace Tank and Mastery Badge in there. I got Radley Waters Mail because I got the 9 kills and also High Calibre. It was a times 3 experience, so I got a lot of XP there, almost doing 4,000 damage, which for the tier was pretty decent in my opinion. Also made quite a bit of actual credits as well from there. I know it's running a premium account, but with the premium shells I had to use at the end, I still made some profit there. Hope you enjoyed uh, that replay, guys. If you did, please consider leaving a like on the video. It really does help me out, and I'll see you on the next one.